Uh, so we are in uh, Teshuvah or Shuvah, depending on how, how you prefer to pronounce it. Uh, it's based on the root word, which is Shuv. It's what we translate in our Bible more than 1,000 times into the word repentance. It means literally to turn around and head back towards God. That's what it means. And so this is a 40-day time and period and season where we are turning back uh, towards God and coming to Him. And so here's my favorite part. The time we're in right now, the month of Elul, it began uh, August 8th. Of, uh, of, of this year, began August 8th. It will conclude on uh, September 5th, September 6th, when we go into Rosh Hashanah. And here's, here's the illustration that the Lord gave me yesterday. So the king is in the field. Okay, so we, we, we know in Revelations, Dorothy, this is your favorite book, Revelations, mm -hmm. that it says that the angels are all about him saying, holy, holy, holy. Non-stop, just holy, holy. He's on the throne. Holy, holy, holy. Okay, then... He walks away from that. He walks away from, from being worshipped. And he walks the earth and he does not go back until Rosh Hashanah. For 30 days he's walking the earth and he's looking for you, an audience of one, to come to you and go, hey, if you'll fix this relationship, this go-round, when the shofar blasts and I pronounce king again for another year, I will go right the most favorable future for you. When he comes, and he is coming to every single person, there's parable after parable after parable that Jesus told it tells. He left the 99 to go find the one. He's in heaven. He's got millions of angels around him, but he left them to come find the one. Mm -hmm. He already has the sheep. So we think of that story as salvation, okay? So yes, there's a salvation thing to it, but the sheep are already his. So he left the 99, and he's looking for you right now in this time and in this season to say, hey, if you fix this relationship with your brother, if you fix this with your coworker, if you fix this with your cousin, you fix that relationship with your mom, you fix this relationship and you do this, when Coronation Day comes, and that's what Rosh Hashanah is, it's Coronation Day, the shofar blast 100 times saying that the king of the universe is now king again. We put him back in his rightful place because he himself put himself down to the lowly place to come and find you and say, I love you so much. I left everything to come and tell you and say, I love you. And if you'll do these one or two little things in this 40-day window of time, Oh, the things I have planned for you next year. Mm -hmm. Oh, the things I'm going to release to you. But you got to have your heart right. You got to have your heart right towards Him and you got to be obedient. You got to have your heart right towards your fellow man because every single human being on this planet is created in His image. Whether they're good or bad or completely evil or anything in between, they are all created in His image. They're just dealing with an identity crisis. They don't yet know who they are. And so the king of the universe steps down and he will not go back into his rightful place mm -hmm. until that shofar blows 100 times. And we say, king of the universe, you created everything. But this year, I decree and declare that not only are you king of the universe, but you're the king of my heart. I put you back in the right place. The past year, I messed up here and I messed up there and you reminded me of those things and I'm going to fix those and I'm not going to deal with those situations this year because you're going to help me because you write a favorable future for me because you love me so much that you left glory. You left angels just singing and praising and saying all the wonderful things about you nonstop to come and spend time with me. You love me so much that you walked away from it just to say, Chris, fix this. Chris, talk a little softer when you talk to this person. Chris, give this person a gift. Chris, release what's in your hand in the time and season and watch what I will do for you. I don't know about you, but I have great expectations and I know this year is gonna be greater than any other year that Tamara and I have gone through since doing this. Every single year is better than the year before. Is it not, Tamara? It is. Every single year is better because we love people the way he loves them. 
Have we perfected it? No, not even close. Mm -mm. But I promise you, when we started this in 2013, I love people way better than I love them then. Mm -hmm. I just assume not even look at certain people. My blood pressure would get up. It would aggravate me. I would, it, they don't bother me no more. They have no power over me. No person should have any power over you. Mm -mm. No demon in hell should have any power over you being influenced through another person. When you begin to realize who you are and you begin to release the hurt, release the offense, and it's a process. It doesn't just happen. It's a, it's a four-step process. First and foremost, you've got to confess the sin. The person that, that's offended you, let them know they've offended you. If you've offended somebody else, go to them and say, I've, I've, I've done wrong to you and I'd like to make that right. Confess it. Then you got to make a plan so it never, ever happens again. How do you do that? Let's just take pornography, for example. It's just a personal sin. You deal with a personal situation. You deal with pornography every single day. How are you going to overcome that? Well, first and foremost, you confess the sin to your father. And then you find an accountability person that you can confess to. Look, I'm dealing with this. I have a hard time with it. And it really, I, I try. I don't desire to do it, but it keeps happening. Because the enemy looks for a more opportune time. You find mm -hmm. an accountability person that you can call at 2 o'clock in the morning when the temptation comes. That's not going to get mad at you, but it's going to love you through it and go, hey, it's okay. You know? You don't have to do that. Let's find out what the trigger is. Let's talk about it. So get some accountability around your life. Then the next thing you do is you make a gift. You make an offering to the person. So if it's a person that you're dealing with, you, you, you give them a gift card to a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Release what's in your hand because when you do that, they're like, oh, they must really forgive me. They, something changed. It's a sign. It's a symbol. When you release what's in your hand, then God can do something. Then if it's like the pornography situation, it's God you're sinning against. That, that's, where, that's where the issue's at. You make an offering to Him. You say, God, I'm so serious about this. I'm going to put this hedge of protection around me. This is not going to bother me again. This is not going to be a mountain that I go around for 40 years. This is something that we finish today. And it's done with. And you bring yourself. You say, I'm so serious. I'll release it to you. And then once you've done those three steps, this is the hardest one for most people. you got to forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. you got to receive the forgiveness. Because he went and paid the ultimate price. He died the death that no one should ever have to die. So that you would come to know him. So you could spend eternity with him. So that he would take your place for every one single sin that you've done in the past, the ones you're doing right now, and the ones that you will do in the future, whether you do them intentionally or not. He already paid the price. That's right. He loved you so much. Every other person whose blood was shed has cried for vengeance. His blood is the only blood that cried for forgiveness. He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. He loves you that much. And this is my favorite time of year. Because this time of year, it's a supernatural reset that the mm -hmm. Lord sets up for every single person on the planet. But here's the thing. Only you can push the button. Only you can make the choice to say, I love you, Lord, so much that you asked me to do one or two things. And right now they seem really difficult because I really hate that person. You have no idea the things they've said to me. You have no idea the things that they've, they've done to me. Uh, you may have been molested. You may have been sexually abused. But when you release those people to the Lord, you're going to have peace that passes understanding. Yeah. There's going to be a grace and a mercy that comes over you. You're going to be washed over, and you're no longer going to be the same. Because as long as you allow that hurt and offense there, that person controls you. But the second you forgive them, they no longer have any power over you. And I want to encourage you with that today. It's Shuva time. It's time to come back to the Lord. You've walked away. Even, even, even you know, you may not have even realized you walk away. Let's look at Samson. Samson, the Spirit of the Lord left him and he didn't even realize it. How many of us have watched so much television, heard so much negative news, and had so many things. That our faith is in fear and not in God. Yes. Our faith is in everything that the media tells us and the, and the FDA and the CDC and the, and the, and the politicians and, and what's going on. That's where our faith is at, and our faith isn't in the one that created us. Anything that takes time away from Him becomes an idol. 
And every single one of us is allowed out of worship in during this COVID thing. If we've listened to the news more than we've spent time in the Word. If we've done anything where we focused more on what's going on than on the one who can fix the problem. We've put an idol in the way. And now it's time to commit Shuva and come back to Him wholeheartedly. Open your heart up. And when the shofar blasts, say, Lord, you are the king of my heart. I release everything to you. I am no longer my own. And in doing that, I have freedom that I've never felt before. I no longer have fear. I'm no longer concerned about the sin anymore because the sin no longer has power over me. I'm no longer concerned about hurting others because I have your heart now that I can't hurt them. All I can do is love them. And that's the season that we're in. And only you can make the choice and push the button. I beg you today, push the button. Reset your life. Come back to him. And let him be the king, the center of your universe. And not just the king of the universe. And one of the things that you can do every day, you should do this. Perry Stone wrote a book called The Meal That Heals, right here. And we have the communion sets here. If you want to have communion, we have it here. Um, you can take all of this, but this is the meal that heals. Yes. Speak of it. What, what, I, what I love about this <clears throat> is this, this isn't just what Jesus did. This is who Jesus was and who Jesus is. Tells us in John that he was there in the very beginning, that he was the Word and the Word was him, and through him everything was created. Then we get another reference to the bread, uh, the manna that fell. He's the bread that fell and fed them in the wilderness, the perfected mm -hmm. food, angel's bread. That is who he is. And that he takes the thing that's the easiest thing for every human being on the planet to get their hands on bread and says, I am the bread of life. By my stripes, you are healed. Mm -hmm. By my brokenness, you are whole. In every area of your life, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, you are not less than because you are my child. You are more than. You are an overcomer. You are a conqueror. And I was beaten beaten beyond recognition. I was abused more than any person's ever been abused. I've had my hair pulled out, my skull pierced, my flesh ripped because I loved you so much. And in doing that, I've taken on every sickness. I've taken on every single disease. And there is nothing that I cannot overcome in your life through you when you partake this of me and you do it with a right heart. So we break it right now with a right heart. Thank you that your body is broken and that we are healed in every area, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. We no longer lack. We are no longer orphans. We are now adopted sons and daughters of the King. Praise Him. Healing would have been enough. Having a healed mind and, and everything, that's great. But if we were, spent eternity without him, what good would it have been? He loved us so much that he shed his blood. He shed his blood for every single human being. It doesn't matter what you've done. You're not too far away. It doesn't matter. Uh, if, if you are a murderer, Paul was a murderer, David was a murderer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you're an adulterer, David was an adulterer. It does not matter your sins or your past. He cares more about your future. He cares so much about your future that his blood was shed, and where everyone else's blood said revengeance, his said forgiveness. And when we take this, not only does he forgive us of our sins, but he does the remission of them as though they never happened. They are as far as the east is from the west. They are thrown into the sea of forgetfulness. And you may remember them, but the Father does not. That's how much he loves you. And right now in this season, he left 
the angels that are singing around him and telling him how wonderful and great he is because he loves you so much. He left the 99 to come for the one. You are so valuable to him. And when we take this, we remind ourselves that we are the head and not the tail, that we are above and not beneath, and we are blessed coming and going in the city and the field, that we're lenders and not borrowers, and we are not less than, but we are more than, and we are overcomers through his blood in Jesus' name. Praise his holy name. All right, well, Father God, we just thank you right now for your Holy Spirit that has just come in and settled in this place. Not only has it settled in this place, but over the airways and every single person that heard this message today, whether they hear it right now or they hear it later in the future, on the internet or across the world, wherever it is, that people realize who they are. They realize what you have done and that you have left glory to come and search them out now. And so, Lord God, we thank you for healing, for restoration, for mercy, for grace, for deliverance in every single person's life right now. And that everyone will hear this message and truly do shuva. Make a 180 and head right back to you with open arms to the Father who says, I love you and I have room for you at the table. In Jesus' name.